Hi, my name is Reza from Visual Components. In this tutorial, I will use a process modeling layout named Turning Machine Layout from Visual Components 4.2 to test the statistics components. So let's go to statistics folder and get the bar chart. Let's attach the bar chart to one of the machines we have in the layout and create three type of properties to create a bar chart from those properties. So I'll make the ideal percentage of the machine in the green color as one of the properties. So let me find the green color now. Yeah, that's there. And then let's go to the busy percentage and put the color as red. And then also let's add the block percentage. These are three different states of the machine. This one I would use orange to visualize it. And these three states will be shown now very beautifully next to the machine. So let me put some space between the properties name. These were the visual names you can also see on the uh, bar chart labels inside a 3D world space. So let me play a little bit around with the simulation speed to get some values already. One thing I wanted to mention is that when you go uh, in the actual uh, process executor of the machine, you will see these states ideal, busy and blocked in the process executor. So these are things that you can actually also set by yourself and then run your machine for days in a matter of seconds in simulation and get the statistics out of that. How awesome is that, right? Now, let me slow down the simulation, go and bring a beacon. With the beacon, we can get the states of the machine when we attach it to a specific component. It could be also actually a conveyor or any component that has states So when I press the simulation, first I snapped it on the machine and now the simulation is playing. Uh, let the components arrive so the robot starts to put them inside this machine. Okay, nothing is happening. You know why? Because I forgot to attach it to the machine. Let me attach it and then you can also set the state uh, colors. Here, for example, idle is yellow and then we have the other states with different colors. So now it's idling and then it's busy with green color and blocked state is violet. Okay, let's go to the next component, cycle time calculator. With cycle time calculator that at the moment the size is a bit big, so let me change it to 20% when it's attached to a conveyor we can basically get a lot of awesome values. From the statistics scope property, we can get the main product amount or also get the products on a palette. And then from the filters, we can filter certain names, certain product IDs or both. We can also get the last cycle time, mean cycle time, lead time, and also generate statistics tab. So let's go and press play and see what we get out of this beautiful component. So you can see already that the lead time and mean lead time have been updated. So they are based on the amount of the components in that time of the simulation. And if I open the statistics table, you can see also the cycle time calculator and the lead time also. They have been automatically generated for us with this beautiful component. Perfect. What's next? The next is the cycle time calculator. So let's drag and drop one in the 3D world. So if we go to process tab and then see that specific process that robot is picking the part from the conveyor to the machine, you can see in 
this specific process the implementer is robot so let's change the robot motion to record a routine and the name of the routine will be my routine when i press play this part of the program of the robot that has been done for us automatically will be recorded to a routine on the program tab for the robot and I'm going to use that to create the cycle time. So how that happens, now I go to the program tab and see a my routine is gen, uh, generated. It's a routine that was uh, recorded for us. And uh, I'm going to use the output port of 101, set it to true. And then at the end of our program or wherever we want it we can set the same port to false so now what i'm gonna do is to go under the specific uh, product group under the process flow editor and set the robot motors for that implementer to execute the routine so that a signal that we set would be turned on and off what I'm going to do next is to set that signal uh, connecting it to the cycle time calculator. So this calculator will be starting a timer when that value 101, the signal value is true. And when it's false, then it will just calculate the time between these two. Now I need the output panel. So what I'm going to do is go to the show and use the output window. Let's clean it up. We'll wait for the robot to start doing something. Maybe I would need to speed up simulation. Not really. Okay. So the first cycle time that we got from that robot motion was 7.3 and we get the other cycle times from this generic robot. The next component from statistics folder is inline statistics label. When you import it, I'm gonna put face edged shaded view so I can see the lines around it. This component has a blurry appearance. And when I put it in between of the conveyor and the sync process, it starts to give me the total parts that have passed it and also the average production rate per hour. And look down there how beautifully the cycle time is still being published. I really like this uh, statistics components. They are giving so much useful information. So we have had so far a 117 or 18 parts per hour produced. Okay, the next one is inventory tracker. With inventory tracker, we can basically uh, choose a product ID, name of a uh, product or material and get the amount of the quantity of those it should be basically attached to the conveyor and here I choose the name so for that purpose you can actually see the lathe component 3 the quantity is 3 and the lathe component 1 the quantity is uh, increasing basically I'm playing around with the simulation speed you could also choose the uh, custom property name and get the amount of components based on that custom property. The last but not least is the statistics display. Let me grab one and bring it in the 3D space and snap it above this turning machine. And actually I don't need to just snap it. We can connect and attach to parent and use a location for this display to be attached. Now you can see the values are updated above the machine. The small turning machine uh, is the component name, utilization rate, production rate, parts produced. So if I speed up the simulation, 
after few seconds we are we are in the first hour and the utilization is 66.2 percent for this machine production rate is about 60 parts per hour and parts produced 72 so by having all these components in our layout we can study it better improve it and as a result save cost and time I hope you enjoyed this tutorial that concludes what I wanted to show you. Thank you and bye for now.